screwdrivers. You need a few of these. RVs and trucks have a lot of screws. You carry an assortment of them. Uh, you're going to need some Allen keys. Uh, there's some, here you can see some longer screwdrivers. You might have to get into a deep spot. Um, your basic Robertson, Phillips, this one here is a quarter inch nut driver, and a couple fairly heavy flathead screwdrivers. Also, it can be good for prying out stuff. I um, also carry this little kit, it has all the different Torx type screws, and even some of the tamper proof screws. You never know what you're going to run into. This is kind of a handy one, it allows me to to go at an angle into a screw to get into a really tight spot which happens a lot in an RV where they've put the screw in at the factory and then put a cabinet around it so that really is a handy tool you might look into something like that and get yourself a good quality screw gun this little one by Makita it's been a great little unit it takes a little lithium battery Last a long, long time on the battery, and he has a clutch for different settings. Highly recommend that little. There you have it. One more thing on the screwdrivers. This one here is my go-to screwdriver. You know, you have all the different bits right in it really high quality it's called a pick quick and yeah that's the one I use most often and then I have one that's a little smaller same idea interchangeable bits but it's more of a stubby one which again allows you to get into tight spots those two are by far the most I'll use out of all the different screwdrivers wrenches this is the assortment of wrenches I carry uh, just your basic socket set, nothing fancy. Uh, I got some channel locks, a couple different types. Got a small vice grips and larger vice grips, and a couple sets of crescent wrenches. That's pretty well enough to to tackle any bolt that I come across. E electrical. Here are some of the basic items I take for uh, solving any problems that might crop up with the electrical. I have a, a plug-in soldering iron and a small battery operated soldering iron. Um, also I have some shrink tubing and some what they call butt connectors, a few other different electrical assorted connectors. Um, different types of wire and here we have some electrical clips, tester clips. Next we have assorted fuses for the, the tow vehicle and the, the Cougar. Those are some other butt connectors. Uh, my tester is my trusty Fluke multimeter and this is a non-contact voltage tester that can tell me if, if the, a wire is hot or not. Over here we have a battery charger, about a 50 foot long extension cord, various uh, adapters for the electrical, and all the different types of bulbs that I, that I may need to replace on the, the tow vehicle, the truck, or the interior. Here's what I keep in my plumbing supply arsenal. I have your uh, standard hose washers and uh, thread tape. Then I have some ABS solvent cement in case I have to do some pipe repair. Good old plumber's putty, great for sealing leaks. Uh, for the hot water heater I have a spare element. Uh, my element burns out and then this 
This here is a specialized wrench for changing that element. You can see it's got quite the large nut and a standard socket won't fit on it because it's recessed. So you get one of these tools to do that. And another specialized tool is a type of a spanner wrench for tightening up the plastic nuts on the, the plastic plumbing pipes inside. And then this special socket is what I use to take out the anode rod inside my my water heater and also so I can drain and flush the water here. Cutting, scraping and filing. Hopefully you're not going to have to do too much of that. But if you do, it's good to have a simple little set of tools. I usually carry an exacto knife, a couple different types. That one's good if you need to cut away some carpet or something. Hopefully not. Uh, there's another neat little scraper there. Also good for prying into small places. Uh, hacksaw blade. And a good quality set of scissors. A little pocket knife. Your standard file. A good wire brush. Another one for doing battery terminals. And a couple other little wire brushes. I also carry a a small uh, wood saw. Pliers and cutters. I have to admit I'm a little bit of a geek when it comes to pliers, being that I was a TV repairman for many years. So I've collected a lot, but my advice for an RVer is have a basic set of needle nose and some good side cutters. So you want fairly heavy duty side cutters like those and maybe a, a smaller set like that for some fine wire work. Um, also, some type of wire strippers would be good too. And as far as needle nose, you get a long set like this. It's nice because you may be reaching into very skinny areas to get at something, especially in an RV. You're always working in some cramped spots, so a nice long set of needle nose like that where you could pry out a staple or any number of things is a good way to go. And then maybe some, maybe a finer set of needle nose for more delicate jobs. Here are some of the things I uh, use to seal things and keep things in place. So I have an assortment of zip ties, different sizes. Um, we have some silicone, just clear all-purpose silicone, and some automotive goop, just kind of like a black sealant. And over here we have what they call Gorilla Tape, which is like a super duct tape. I have regular duct tape. I have what they call uh, double-sided sticky tape. That's that's a good way, thing to seal stuff with. And this is called rescue tape, which is for stopping leaks in plumbing or air hoses. Um, this is a shiny ducting sealing tape. And what they call butyl tape, which is used to seal RV windows and outside vents and things like that. And then for plumbing or water, I have this type of tape here and good old electrical tape. Here we have the roof sealant, Dicor lap sealant, and then a marine silicone sealant. And finally we have some baling wire, a few different types of baling wire or sometimes called piano wire or pitcher hanging wire. That's really good if you need to, to tie something up temporarily. And then I carry the this device for applying the sealant.
One thing you're going to find with an RV, because you're driving it down the road and it's vibrating like crazy, is you're going to lose screws or have screws come out. Nuts, bolts, staples. So it's good to, to get yourself an assortment of screws and nuts and bolts. Sometimes the screw will pop out and you won't even find it again. Or other times the screw will be be too uh, worked, the hole, worked out of the hole and made it the thread strips so you'd have to put in a slightly larger screw so that it'll bite and, and hold whatever whatever it's trying to hold like a cabinet door so I keep a really good assortment of screws and usually I have some bags of just odds and ends different different screws and holders small little tacks nice and short so you don't puncture through and hurt anything on the other side of the wall and a staple gun and staples Here's some more miscellaneous tools that I carry. A decent hydraulic trolley jack, a couple jack stands, jumper cables, a bottle jack, an axe, and a torque wrench. Okay, here's some uh, mis miscellaneous items that you might want to have. Uh, we're gonna good idea to have air compressor pump up your tires uh, good quality heavy electric drill and some good quality bits don't cheap out on the bits you'll be sorry uh, I usually carry a small shovel that could be handy if you get stuck somewhere and you have to dig around the tires or anything like that uh, grease gun with grease for your bearings. Uh, what else we got? I usually carry a small level. Ball peen hammer. Uh, crowbar. Always a handy thing. Especially if you lock yourself out. You can always get into your trailer. <laughs> Uh, I carry extra bug screen mainly because my beagle is always clawing the, the screen so I'm replacing it quite often. Uh, good rubber mallet if you need to adjust someone's attitude that works really well too. Um, some poly polypropylene rope, small funnel, usually use that for doing the batteries and a good long tape measure. Don't get a short 10 foot or get at least 25 feet in case you're measuring a campsite or something like that seeing if your trailer is going to fit and flashlights I usually like to carry around a good LED one I find the batteries last a lot longer but I have probably seven or eight flashlights but that's one of my favorites <laughs> 